Straight on to business, Stephen is joining us here on set, our business editor, of course. And he's starting uh, today with moves to replace, eventually anyway, Carlos Ghosn as uh, head of the boss of uh, Renault. That's right. The French government has now confirmed that it's looking for a replacement for Carlos Ghosn and in his roles as chairman and chief executive of the car maker Renault. Now, Ghosn has been in custody in Japan for almost two months, accused of financial misconduct at Renault's partner Nissan. The French government is the biggest shareholder in Renault and Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire says that it's requested a board meeting to discuss a change in leadership at the company. Until now, France had publicly supported keeping Ghosn in his position as he awaited trial. Coles Tangler has more. It's time for Renault to move on from Carlos Ghosn. That was the message from French Economy Minister Bruno Le Maire, a change in tone from the government which had previously backed the automaker's decision to keep going at the helm since his arrest nearly two months ago. The board of directors must name a new long-term head of Renault. It's the biggest industrial automobile company in the world. It needs stability. The French government is Renault's largest shareholder with 15.01% and plays kingmaker in the company allied to Nissan and Mitsubishi. Among the frontrunners to replace Ghosn as chairman, Jean-Dominique Senard, current CEO of tire maker Michelin. He has both experience and knowledge of the auto sector without being too close to the inner circle. It gives him some distance from Renault, while at the same time a solid understanding of the global auto industry. At the same time, Thierry Bolloré is a top contender to take over as CEO. Ghosn's former deputy has served as interim chief since the businessman's arrest. Renault's nominations committee is expected to broach the topic Sunday, followed by a full board meeting on Monday. Meanwhile, Ghosn's legal travails roll on. Arrested by Japanese authorities on November 19th, Ghosn has been hit with a number of charges related to financial misconduct, which he denies. On Tuesday, a Tokyo court refused to grant him bail, meaning he could remain in pretrial detention for several months. U.S. prosecutors are said to have begun a criminal investigation into the Chinese technology company Huawei for stealing trade secrets from their American business partners. That's according to reports in the Wall Street Journal, which says that charges in the matter are imminent. This comes as a group of U.S. lawmakers introduce bills that would ban the sale of U.S. microchips or other components to Chinese companies, including Huawei and its rival ZTE. China's foreign ministry has described the proposed legislation as hysteria. Well, let's take a look at what's happening on the markets for you next. In Europe, shares starting the day in the red. Here in Paris, the bank Société Générale's shares opening down 4%. That's after they reported a 20% drop in earnings from their global markets and investor services division. This is the picture at the open, so red across London, Paris and Frankfurt. A mixed picture in trading in Asia. Investors still rattled by concerns over China's economic outlook. Shanghai and Hong Kong in the red. Tokyo also finishing the day down. That was after moves in the value of the yen. Just the cost being sold there, seeing some small gains in Asia. We're keeping an eye too on the British pound for you today as the political drama over Brexit continues. Sterling trading pretty flat against the dollar and the euro. One pound trading for just under one dollar and 29 cents and one euro and 13 cents as well. Moving on, a court in the United States has ruled that Domino's Pizza must make its website and mobile app accessible to blind people. Guillermo Robles had sued the company after he couldn't use the app to buy a customised pizza because it wasn't compatible with Apple's screen reading software for the visually impaired. He successfully argued in court that it had breached American disabilities law by placing an undue burden on him to access their goods. Microsoft is investing $500 million in affordable housing in its home city of Seattle. The money will go towards building homes for low- and middle-income workers like teachers and hospital staff. It'll mostly be spent in the form of loans to developers. Microsoft and Amazon's expansion in the Seattle area has driven up the price of accommodation sharply in recent years. An attempt by the city to tax big firms to fund homeless services was defeated last year. And finally, for me, an Irish fast food chain has won a landmark trademark case against McDonald's over the use of the term Big Mac. The case dates back to 2014 when McDonald's opposed Supermax applications for a European Union-wide trademark. 
After years of appeals, the EU's Intellectual Property Office has agreed with Supermax's argument that McDonald's didn't properly register the term Big Mac. Supermax is named after a childhood nickname of its owner, Pat McDonough. He now plans to register the Supermax name across the EU and resume plans for the chain's international expansion. Stuart. No, Big Mac, Supermax, it's not the same thing, is it? No. Totally different. Thanks, Stephen. Stephen Carroll uh, on France 24 with the business.